board. Hello everyone, this is April Cox and we are here with the Self-Publishing Made Simple Author Work Group. We have a special event today with Dave Chesson from Kindle, who um, founded Kindlepreneur, um, has one of my very favorite keyword tools with Publisher Rocket, um, one of my um, people that I have looked up to for a long time and I am so happy to have him here today. We are going to um, use this first hour as an opportunity to get to know Dave and do an Ask Me Anything with Dave. And then the second hour, for those of you that are part of our author work group, we are gonna be moving on to an Ask Me Anything or just kind of go through your um, um, problems, issues, questions about self-publishing. And I will be here to stay through till 10 o'clock. So we'll have Dave from eight to nine. And then I'll be hanging in here with Bobby Hinman, who is kind of my co-host here. And uh, we'll be going on through till 10 o'clock. So let me start by sharing a little bit here. All right. So um, we are in um, week seven of our 12 week author work group. So after we meet with Dave, um, cause I'm gonna just skip over the check-in and we'll do that at the, at the next hour. Um, we're gonna have Dave through uh, from about 8.15 or so until Q and A around 8.45. Um, Nick, can I just ask you to just uh, chat, send us a chat when we start getting to that point where it's time for questions so that we can um, kind of switch over or five minutes left. I don't want to go too far over, but we'll okay. just, I just need a timekeeper. Um, so uh, I'm going to just tell you guys a little bit of, of a story about how I found Dave Chesson and um, why he is somebody that I look up to so much. And I'm, I, you have to bear with me, Dave. <laughs> so about a year and a half ago, I was inspired to write a children's book for my grandkids, and many of you have heard this story. There, is, there was not a lot of information out there, or there was just information overload. There was you know, conflicting information, and um, I somehow stumbled across Dave Chesson's site, kindlepreneur.com, and I found like it was like the the sky opened up and it shone down and it was like oh i have something that i can finally learn what i'm doing and it was so well organized at the time i was trying to understand ams ads so amazon marketing and marketing my book was like just i am not a marketing guru i'm a propeller head geek i tend to be somebody who's you know the silly Nana, not the marketing expert. I, you know, give me a project plan or an IT project to manage and I'm fine. Ask me to market it or sell it. Um, I didn't know where to begin. So Dave's site was such a wealth of information. And then I went on and I found that he was doing a free, he had a free AMS class. And I thought, okay, so he'll be just like everybody else. I'll get like a 20 minute webinar and then he'll try to sell me thousands of dollars worth of products. Um, I was blown away. I went through this class and it was one lesson after another, after another. And the more it went on, the more valuable it got. And I just kept waiting for the pitch to try to sell me something and it never came. And I remember emailing Dave and saying, I am so grateful for this course because, and for every, all these free tools that he had on his site. Um, and I've and people have asked me the same thing. April, why are you doing this class? Why are you doing all this for free? Why don't you charge anything? Um, and I, this is, I think we're about 80 people we've put through in within the last two groups. And um, it's because of this man who inspired me and gave me that 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 feeling that I had going on to his site is what I wanted to feel. And that sense of community is what I have been trying to build for you guys. So I know I've been going on way too long. Um, so I, I just wanna thank Dave and kind of give him an opportunity to introduce himself a little bit 
um, and I threw like the many faces of Dave and what Dave is doing on this slide here. Um, but Dave, go ahead and, and just give us kind of an overview of your story and how you came about to from from military to running your own business and doing all of this great stuff with marketing. Well, sounds good. And, and thank you. I'm really honored by, by that statement. Um, you know, it really fits with what my goals were. So I'm really happy that you found that. Uh, for you guys don't know, I'm Dave Chesson. I uh, used to be in the U.S. military. I was in the Navy. And uh, there came a time where I decided I was going to sit down and finally write a book that I'd had in my heart. And I had spent, you know, just an innumerable, a lot of time just really working on this story, this book. And when I looked at the competitors and the other books that are out there, I knew that what I was doing was much better writing. However, though, I saw that they were selling better. They had better Amazon bestseller ranks. They were ranking better in categories. And I just sat there and I was just like, why? Why is it that Amazon continues to sell their book when my book is better? So at that point, I kind of used my analytical brain and I started to say, you know, I want to figure out what makes Amazon tick. What makes them choose to show one book over another? Why is it that this one's more successful than this one? And when I got down into it, I started to realize there were really key important things that affected a book's discoverability, that affected a book's chances of being shown, and ultimately a book's chances of success. And when I started to implement those things, my book started taking off. I started really enjoying, you know, uh, seeing people reading it, uh, getting the reviews and everything. And what what it ultimately allowed me to do was finally stop working for the US military and be home full time with my family, which was incredible for me because the past three out of four years of my military career, I was deployed without my children. And so my major motivating factor for figuring this out, not just writing a book and then seeing failure and then quitting, but to figure it out was that I wanted to be home with my kids. And if I didn't figure this out, I would be letting them down. So from that point on, when I found that aspect, I created Kindlepreneur.com because I didn't think anybody was covering this information. Nobody was breaking down what happens. And I've got a very systematic approach to things. I really want that every Kindlepreneur article to be something where if you read it, you now have everything you need to turn around and execute and see results. And the funny thing, you brought up the Amazon course. What was, what was crazy about this was I was trying to write an article on Kindlepreneur that would give you every step to do Amazon ads. Mm -hmm. And I, I think I hit the 14,000 word mark on that article. And I was like, no, this is not a very, nobody's going to sit down and read a 14,000 word article. And I realized the best way that you can do this is to actually show people. So that's when I decided to just turn the article that I was creating into a full free course. Uh, Lisa, by the way, I love the fact that I just saw your daughter run by. Um, I'm just, <laughs> I, 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 our office is our home as writers and that is just epic. So, yeah. but I mean, that's really, hey, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. You have no idea. I, I'm so blessed that my little rugrats are not running through as we speak, but believe me, they'd be, tr they'd be <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Sorry. Anyways. But I mean, that was, that was a really key for me. Um, what's really cool is some of the things that have happened since, uh, even Amazon KDP has actually sponsored my content. Uh, and in one case, when talking about how, uh, to optimize your book for sales, they even quoted, uh, some of my articles and have actually referred their people to my articles. So that was really awesome. And I've also had the honor of working with Orson Scott Card, Ted Decker, um, Kevin J. Anderson. And if you're a sci-fi geek, like you know who those people are. And I'm a huge sci-fi geek. So I, I've just been really blessed to be able to, you know, just continue doing what I'm doing, but more importantly, be home with my kids. That's awesome. So I know Dave, you said you'd like to just, um, do you want to kind of go through and ask folks what they're working on to give you a little bit of background? I also want to make sure we have plenty of time to talk with you about questions and things like that. But I'm okay with just kind of going down the line and spending, you know, 20 seconds kind of giving an overview. And I talked way too much about myself. So I'll go ahead and move on to Misty. Go ahead, Misty. Well, hello. I had my video off. <laughs> um, so I, I just launched a book today, my very first book. 
Hey, congratulations. Yay! Yeah. yeah. So this is really a great time for me to learn how to promote it. So I'm really excited about that. Excellent. Congratulations. And Mary? Oh, hold on, Mary. Let me unmute you. There you go. Go ahead, Mary. Right? Okay. Yeah, I know. Um, I'm hearing impaired, so I'm just making sure I'm hearing the right thing. Okay. <laughs> um, I just had my book published in June. The name of it is The Legend of Eddie the Whale. And I'm very happy about it, and I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Nancy? I published my first book in February, but it wasn't a children's book. And I, then I wrote a children's book. It's not illustrated yet. And now I'm writing a, a third book, but it's nonfiction. Nice. So this has been a good forum for you, even though you've had books published. Are you still learning a lot with this series? Oh, big time. Yes. Good. <laughs> Marketing. That, so that, good. Makes, that makes my heart happy. Yeah. And Nick, how are, you can go ahead. Let me unmute you. Go ahead. Thank you. Hi, Dave. Thanks for coming. Um, I have uh, four books currently on, on Amazon, which started as apps, actually, mobile apps. And I just thought, well, I'll just move them over to books. So, but they're all in the millions in rank. And I, they're really doing lousy. And I, I haven't done really that much uh, advertising, except one was able to get into Costco. I was able to get into eight Costco's, eight Costco book signings, which was great, which I negotiated. So um, and then there's one that I'm currently working on right now um, that I'm illustrating. And I, I illustrate all my books, and, I, and then I author as well. Thank you for um, feeling free to be able to share all of our, our wins and our successes and struggles. So I appreciate that, Nick. And Pam. Oh, sorry, Pat Wallace. Hey. <laughs> Hi, Pat. Um, Hi. I have some nonfiction published and participated in two anthologies that are bestsellers. And I have wanted to really focus on my children's books and finish them. And um, this course has been fabulous for getting me inside <laughs> to get busy and get done. I illustrate and write. So it's a lot, but I get enough encouragement here and inspiration to keep going. And you're a ghostwriter as well. Yes. <laughs> pretty incredible juggling act you've got going on there. Kelly, go ahead. Hi. <laughs> Um, I have just finished writing, <laughs> after like well over a year, a picture storybook. I was on pause for a while, and I should be starting illustration maybe tomorrow, April, maybe? Yes, 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 yes. We have um, a meeting. Yep. And I have a puzzle book that's going to be out soon, um, and another project. So I'm just excited. I have Publisher Rocket. I actually bought it before I saw the AMS course that you did. Oh, cool. So I love it, and I've actually already found some really awesome categories for my puzzle book Excellent. that I wouldn't have thought of because of the rankings that you show. So I'm a huge fan. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Kelly. Barbara? Um, hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, sorry, I'm late, and we're expecting somebody to come over, and so I'm going to have to leave. But okay. real quick, I started your course last summer, and... Um, I didn't finish it, I'm sorry. So I'm hoping to uh, get more out of it by signing on and, and, and doing the, the rocket thing. So um, I have several picture books published and four of them are with a hybrid and I'm trying to get them off the hybrid. And so I, I, I'm, that's a um, question I'm gonna meet with April tomorrow night, see how I can do that, cancel my contract and, and put them all either on, I guess, KDP is, would, would be the best thing, don't you think? I guess. <laughs> yeah, I think it's safe to say yes. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right, so that's, that's my challenge right now. Yeah, thanks, Barbara. Uh -huh. And Lisa? See if I can unmute you. Hold on, I'm sorry. I must have pressed unmute at the same time as you did. I can't seem to get you off. There you go, you're good. There we go, hello. Hi, Lisa. 
so I'm a hot mess and I have not even started writing my book yet, but I have a gazillion ideas and a notebook full of ideas and a Pinterest page full of ideas. And yeah, I just have to get my ideas happening. Perfect. And, um, uh, April, if we can have a just five minutes at some point in this discussion, I have something that's that's good for you, Lisa. Awesome. Good. Yeah, you can go ahead. I think I've introduced. Is there anybody that did not have a chance to introduce themselves? This is Avanti Centre. Can you hear me? Hi. Hi. Your book lady. Great. Yeah. Thank I'm you very man. much for for hosting April and Dave. Thank you for being here. I mix intrigue, history, science, and mystery into nonstop action thrillers. And my first one is going to come out on November 9th. So I'm here to learn what I can. I'm traditionally published and my publisher is going to be running the Amazon ads, but there may be some room for me to learn some things too. So thank you both. That's thank great. You. And what is, the, what is the age group for that book? Uh, th this is for adults. Okay. Adult thrillers. Yeah. Good, good. And one last person I didn't mean to I didn't mean to miss. Um, Bobby Hinman is here with us today. In this group, we actually Dave use her book that's titled um, "Creating a Success: How to Create a Successful Children's Picture Book." And nice. um, so she, her book actually gives us the structure we need for this. Go ahead, Bobby. I'm okay. Hi, Dave. I'm I'm kind of the old timer in the group because I've been publishing children's picture books since, uh, well, it's been about 10 years. Before that, I had traditionally published seven cookbooks. <clears throat> so I've seen both sides of it. Um, I've sold way over 50,000 copies of my books, but I, I started 10 years ago, so I did it what for me was the easy way. I went to book fairs, I did school visits, I sold everything at retail, and it was wonderful. And in the meantime, Amazon was creeping up in the background. Now I'm trying to um, do some advertising on Amazon, and I find it one of the most frustrating things I've ever done. Mm. So I'm all ears. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is ask those of you who are um, – not speaking or if you have any kind of background noise, just go ahead and put yourself back on mute. I'm gonna go ahead and pass it over to Dave and let me see what I've got here for the next slide. Um, so more of a, uh, just an open, uh, and I'm gonna just stop sharing because then we actually get to see faces instead of my, sl my stale slide. Um, so we'll go ahead and let Dave speak and uh, share a little bit about your story and your journey and um, in this group is typically a group of new and aspiring authors although as you could tell going through the introductions today there are a mixture some people are getting you know there are great topics and great speakers we've been bringing in on publicity and marketing and so we found many who've already published multiple books who are joining the group and helping others with what they know and also getting a lot out of some of these topics like what you're sharing today. Sounds great. Well, um, I guess we heard a bit of my story and I, I'm, if you know me, I love to just jump right in. Um, so I was going to just first talk uh, to Lisa, you were talking about the fact that you have a lot of great ideas. One thing that's great about the digital age is that we no longer have this ability, this hindrance of when serendipity strikes that we can't put something down. I would highly recommend uh, using something that's like a mobile app or like Evernote or Trello to be able to record those ideas when they strike. This is a great thing for writing in general. Uh, one of the things I love most is that sometimes we come across stories. In nonfiction, I may come across a situation in my life or while reading some random post that somebody had where they talked about some ancient Chinese person who went to you know ancient China and did this really cool thing. You're like, wow, that would be a great fit for an example or a story or something that's linear to what I'm talking about. And being able to quickly jot that down, maybe you're not writing a book on that yet, but jotting down those incredible stories or things you come across or the sparks of inspiration are very important. You may be focusing on your children's book on Vikings right now, 
but you may come across something that's dragon in nature that would be really cool. And you never know when all of a sudden you're working on a project on dragons. So Lisa, if you have some way to organize those notes, uh, something like Evernote or Trello or, you know, even I've even seen authors use a voice recorder, right? Where on their iPhone, they have like the press or they even ask Siri to uh, a record for them. They can quickly jot down notes and they can keep those great ideas coming, but they're not having to try to remember them. So just wanted to throw that out there. It was a game changer for me. I've got my Evernote is so crazy with so many ideas and book ideas and research papers and things that I've seen that when it comes time that I either need to construct my nonfiction book or construct my next speech or whatever, I go to those and I start looking and funneling through. So being able to organize your incredible ideas, even if they're not the thing you're working on, is very important because it can pay off way later in your career. So Dave, because we have so many um, newbies and, and many of them have not um, had an opportunity to even, you know, browse the different resources you have, I could certainly share and kind of hop onto your website if you had certain areas you wanted to, to show. But what types of resources or advice would you have for a new author and any tools, specific tools that you would recommend we check out on your site or others? Well, I really think it depends on what stage the author is at. So uh, one of the things I did on my website at kindlepreneur.com, you'll see on the tabs button something that says start here. That right there, when you click on that page, is pretty much what my tome to book marketing would be. It's actually a table of contents. I didn't want to write a book on book marketing and then sell it because my entire website's about that. So instead, go to that page and ask yourself where you are in your book writing, book marketing, um, and look, and you can find what I think are some of the best articles. And by the way, I'll tell you, some of those articles aren't mine because somebody wrote it so well that I'm like, well, I'm not going to rip it off. So I list it there. I think that that is the best list of, of videos, articles, podcasts, you name it, to take you from idea generation to successful publication. And, and well, even beyond that with marketing itself. So to anybody out there, if you have a question, you're stumped on something, I mean, I'm always updating that because I believe that is the kind of step-by-step -step all the way through. And that way you can address whatever your current pain point is or wherever you are with your writing and be able to check it out. And yeah. you know, all of that's free. And, and earlier today, so I'm, I just opened up and went to the start here. And earlier today we had another meeting and um, Michelle, one of our other members said, we need a checklist of step-by-step-by-step -step -step things to do. And immediately in my mind, it was like, Dave already has that. So uh, phase one, before you write, and phase two, putting your book together. Look at all the links and resources that Dave has compiled and provides people um, with a ton of information. It's organized beautifully. And in some cases, you know, there's additional information, but this is a great starting place. I love what you've done here, Dave. Thank you. Now yeah, that was the goal. Just kind of make it because every author is at a different point in their writing career. Every author is at a different point in the writing project. And uh, we just want to make sure that you can find specifically what you need and be able to gain that information. And like I said, sometimes it wasn't my resource. It wasn't my content that was the best. So, you know, it beat me out. It put, we put it there. Okay. And you're also doing podcasts. And well, I, I did a podcast and I've actually podcast. put it on a break for a bit because okay. One of the things with that podcast was I wanted to make sure that it wasn't a interview like, hey, let's talk about all this stuff. But I wanted each podcast episode to be a lesson. In this podcast, you will learn this. I'm going to teach you this. And then I'm going to bring somebody on and we're going to hear their example of when they did what we just learned. And then we're going to move from there. But I'm not going to lie. It was so much work. <laughs> um, it really was. Just to find the right people and orchestrate that. Uh, and we came out with a version 2.0 of Rocket, and it really took up a lot of time. I'm going to get back into it, but the key is, is that it's a lot of work making sure that we cut out the fat and that it is not going to waste your time and that it's beneficial. 
Yeah, I think but it will happen. I what, just want to put I've, that out there. I've appreciated, and I know many authors do, the, how much that you give of instruction. It's like I mentioned before, it's not a sales, you know, hey, let me walk you through 20 minutes and then try to sell you something worth thousands of dollars and try to get you in. Um, so it, it's been, it's, and it's all there, similar to like the... Um, things that we're putting together with our recordings. Dave has done a ton of recordings of specific topics. He's had great speakers in. So it's definitely a good place. Um, if you're driving, working out, whatever, and you just want something to listen to, it's a great place to just plug in and learn something while you're, you know, it, pa passively exercising or moving around or <clears throat> just dancing around the house with the kids. Yeah, just think of them as audio lessons. Um, each one is a lesson, each one will, and I do a recap at the end too. So that way, you know, if you're driving and you don't have the ability to write, just get to that last half or the last one third, excuse me, and I'll give you a recap of all the lessons we learned. So, so can you tell us a little bit about KDP rocket? Um, I have done some recordings for our, and done some walkthroughs for our authors and recorded them. And that tool is something that I'm always using for the categories and the keywords. Um, what, you know, is there anything that you want to review or talk about with regard to um, Kindle, uh, the, the publisher rocket and some of the new enhancements that you've, that you've rolled out? Sure. Uh, well, I'll, I'll be quick to that about that because I really want to get into the, the questions part. I would really love to, to hit some of the things you guys are thinking of or, or kind of stuck on. But ultimately, uh, just to be really quick, uh, I when I started writing books, the biggest thing was trying to figure out why Amazon chose one book over another. And I used to have these very complex Excel sheets. I used to have these things that I would go to, track numbers, record numbers, you know, see trends and everything. And one day I met a really cool group, uh, group of, of programmers and they basically turned my Excel sheet and all of my training and, and studies into something that did it automatically. So our biggest thing is, is helping authors to get discovered. So that's by choosing the right keywords and getting your book seen by more shoppers. It's about seeing what 16,000 categories Amazon has out there and to be able to really know what's the best category for your book, as well as what gives you the best chance of being a bestseller, and um, helping to make your Amazon ads creation more effective and efficient. Like all of these things are here for discoverability and to save authors time. Um, and it's, like I said, it was, just, it was really cool to work with these programmers to make it, you know, uh, very intuitive, so. I love it, the it, fact that that it's also a one-time fee and then and I keep getting every time I log in it seems like there's hey there's more improvements yeah. and it goes out and gets me this new and improved version and I'm not having to pay more money every time well so. I'm an author and it's cool having these programmers so every time Amazon makes a change I'm like you know wouldn't it be great if and I'm like hey programmers let's let's add this so like right now we're we're building a system inside our categories where we're actually going to start recording all the data um, so pretty soon all the rocket users will be able to see trends in categories They'll be able to look and immediately know what categories are actually popular Which ones do people go and purchase books? What's the average amount of money that books are making in that category? Um, and and that's, that should be out hopefully in a month now But you know as a as a writer myself I'm just constantly asking like what information would help me and then I get my my programming team to add it and I, I don't know it's maybe poor business practice, but I personally hate subscriptions. I always have. And um, I hate the fact that people keep charging me or something. And more importantly, I also hate when a program gets better and then they make me pay for that. So my, my policy as a software owner is that uh, you get it for life. You get every update, you get every improvement, you get every feature and we'll never charge you again. So yeah, I, I just, I enjoy working on it. Well, kudos for that. And we appreciate it. Uh, so we're going to, take time now for anybody yeah. who has a question for Dave. This is an ask me anything. So you can feel free to unmute yourself, ask your question, and then we can, um, we can spend as long as Dave will, will stay with us. <laughs> Dave, I got a quick question. Um, yes. Um, when I started, first started talking April, she introduced me to some tools uh, and call like helium 10 and, I don't, I can't remember the other one is April, but how do you compare to those types of programs or is it like a, uh, 
it's not like us versus them type of thing, but how do you compare to those types of tools? Yeah, they are stellar. Uh, Healing 10 is a stellar tool. I mean, straight up, I'm going to put that right out there. They're a bit expensive um, and they're subscription based, but they, I think they earn their, 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 their pay. That's for sure. Um, interesting enough, the company itself was developed mainly for the promotion of physical products. Um, right. and they have a much bigger clientele, but they do some incredible work. And so if you get to a point where you're, you're, you've proven that your ads are working and you want to scale up, that is definitely a good service to look into. Um, just under, but I would not start with them because what you're going to learn with ads is that the ads are great opportunities to 100% know that you're getting your book in front of Amazon shoppers. For the first time, you actually get to see the number of how many people saw your book cover and out of that percentage of people, how many people clicked on your book and then out of that number of people, how many bought your book. And if, you're, if you don't have a great book, let's a bad cover or you have a poorly written description, all of your efforts to get those Amazon shoppers to see it will be for naught, okay? So one thing that I think is important for authors is that they start by really, you know, learning from Maple, learning from this group, making sure that you've created a good cover that grabs attention, have a book description that truly entices and lets the, the shopper understand what they're looking at. And then once you've proven that, that sequence, that landing page, that all of that, is working something like helium 10 gets you to that next level but by that point you're already making enough sales to be able to support the sub subscription fee yeah i like the fact too that dave that you mentioned that you know you need to have that good you know the solid book um i i actually was coaching a, um an author today and we went through and took a look at her book and uh, and she said i don't know why but it's not selling and i said can i be honest with you and she said please because everybody's telling me the book is great and i said the illustrations are just really not good and neither is the cover and i i've read your story and your story deserves better than that and that's why it, nobody's clicking on this it just doesn't look professional and i said I, i'm hoping i'm saying this in a way that's kind but somebody, and she said, I wish somebody would have told me that I've been, you know, spending all this money on ads and everybody, everybody in her family and friends are just telling her everything looks great. So, you know, part of that is finding somebody or a group like this where um, you can have an editor like Bobby Hinman or, you know, bring it to the group and actually get some really good feedback versus just spending a ton of money that you don't have to spend because no matter what you do on ads if, if the cover and the book illustrations or the story are not good, it's not gonna do well. Yeah, one, if I can jump on that, there's a couple of things that I think are very important tactics for authors. Number one is that definitely never ask your family or friends to, to tell you about your book. <laughs> they wanna stay your family, they wanna stay your friends, okay? They're going to tell you, and the other thing too is that family and friends don't understand um, where you're trying to go with this as a professional. I, I had a friend who once created a song, and the song, I mean, like he wrote the song, he produced it, everything. If he was doing this as a hobby, the song was great, good job. But he was expecting this to be a money-making song. And as a friend, I couldn't tell him, this is terrible and you're not gonna make any money with that, <laughs> right? Same thing goes with our books too, is that when you produce a book, if you have really poor you know, illustrations, if, it's, if there's some kind of issue there, your friends and family will not tell you that, okay? Another thing too is, is that while author groups are great, do understand that you're you're not asking your target market. You're asking a bunch of, of authors, what's going on with my book? That's going to be different. Um, one time, my my grandmother Muzzy, I, I love that. I love that gal. She's she's amazing. Um, <laughs> I sent her one of my sci-fi books, and she responded like like Oh dear, like the cover is a little too much violence, and I'm like. <laughs> yeah, it's a science fiction military alien bug hunt, you know, um, it's going to have some violence. And so, and the thing is, is that Muzzy is not a great uh, indicator of how well I did. 
So if you're looking for true, valuable input as to how well your book did, definitely make sure it's not a friend or family and definitely make sure it's, it's, it is somebody actually in your market. And so find Facebook groups that are involved in your market, whether it's a teacher's association, a children's you know, book group or something of that magnitude. And, and let's face it, your market is parents if you're, if you're uh, creating a, a children's book because the parents are the ones that buy it, not the children. So um, keep that in mind. Another thing that I think is very important is your book description. I, I, I can almost do a test and I don't want to put anybody in the spot because we're not all friends. So I, I don't know you, but I would love to call one of you and say, great, give me a two sentence um, elevator pitch on what your book is about. And I'm pretty sure that a majority of the people here would probably fumble through it, right? That you don't have these two great sentences or just a you know 20 second blurb that says, oh my gosh, I want that book. But you know what though? If you practice that, if you prepare where you know you when you meet somebody when your friends ask what's your book about you start working on that two sentences right there okay and watch their face as you say it if their eyes start to glaze over know that that is not a good book description okay if they start getting really interested or they ask questions about it you're getting somewhere and you can continue to hone those those two sentences to the point that you've got it perfected. And then after that, when you're at the party, when you're at the book signing, or when you're trying to create your Amazon book description, you'll have something so much better and you will see so many more conversions. So I would start with just that one simple question that will help you to build out. And a lot of you may say, why did I say two sentences? Why not you know, 10, 15 sentences? Because most book descriptions are like that. And that's because in your book description, I would say that maybe only 20% of the people will make it past your first two sentences. The wow. way that Amazon develops itself is that you have to click to see more in order for it to show the rest of the book description. So that top part, those two sentences right there are what we call the hook. And if that's not good enough, I will not click the see more. I will probably click the back button. But if you crush it, if you make those two sentences great, you're gonna have a much higher chance that I'm either just gonna click the see more and read the rest of your book description or just click the buy button. So make sure you nail those two sentences. That's really good advice. I see Avante, you have your hand raised. Go ahead for a question for Dave. Thank you. Dave, as I mentioned earlier, I'm traditionally published, but my publisher did not buy the rights to the audiobook, which I'm self-producing. Do you know if there's a way that I can run Amazon ads uh, as a self-produced uh, audiobook? Sadly, not at this point. Um, but it would, it, I'd be amazed if in the next year or two, Amazon doesn't add that. Amazon's focus has been on audiobooks. As a matter of fact, of all the three sectors, audiobooks have been the biggest growing sales market. And so I would definitely keep that in mind, but understand that you can't do advertising straight to audiobooks. But the good news is that anytime you do Amazon ads for books or eBooks, um, people will land on your book sales page and they will choose the version they want. I'm actually a diehard audiobook fan. Uh, if it's fiction, 99% of them are audiobooks for me. And I, I thoroughly enjoy it. Some of those narrators are just amazing. But, me too. Uh, and is I'll there, see an ad. Oh, is, there, is there a hack then that because my publisher, so with Amazon Central, I don't see that I can actually run ads is there a hack that I can use to get around that and, and run ads myself that you're aware of? There is a way. Ooh. And I've been trying to find the more effective and efficient way. I can't lay it out in a step-by-step -step yet, but I'll get there. And when I do, it'll be, an, it'll be a Kindle Opener article. But um, there is a way that you can create an Amazon Central account and have it attached to your book and then get permission from the KDP account owner, AKA the publisher, to allow you to advertise to it. That'd but, and, and it is there. It's just that, it, so um, a great example of this is that sometimes Amazon has a way of doing it, but the Amazon people suck at their job. Uh, <laughs> about a year and a half ago, Amazon started really allowing authors to choose 10 categories instead of just three, right? And it was absolutely true. Amazon even said it. The problem was, was that the people who worked their support did not understand this. So about a year and a half ago, my recommendation to authors was 
to add one category at a time. So you'd have to, you know, choose your one category, contact Amazon through this whole step we created, and then get them to add it. Luckily, their support system has finally figured it out, and they are all on top of it. So I had to change my content to make sure it says, no, nah, just ask for all 10 of them right in one shot, and you'll be good to go. Mm -hmm. So I think that's kind of the same way right now with the Amazon ads, is that the process to get to allow you to advertise your book, even though it's under the account of a publisher, is a little bit convoluted but it does exist. Yeah, and I have I have done that. I've experimented with that and I'll probably do a recording of kind of a step by step and do some experimenting with one or two of you. I think Bobby, remember when I requested it when we first started working together and then we decided instead of doing it that way, I would just go into your account. So it's it's there. I know I know the process, but I'm what I'm hoping to go further into is not just advertising for someone else but also being able to do, to add the A plus content too for them. I'm hoping that that will work so that I can help others that, you know, now there's no advantage account, right? So we don't know why Amazon stopped letting people join advantage, mm. uh, but that's been a big thing. So if you don't have advantage, uh, some of these new authors aren't able to do their A plus, you know, add that A plus content like, like I have on my books and others have on theirs that have, been a part of advantage for a while longer yeah well thank you both that's great i really appreciate it okay and if i, I want to jump in on a bit though um and just add some shall i say sobering news on that one of the issues about doing amazon ads for a book of yours that is owned by a publisher is that you have a much smaller roi on your efforts Okay, so if you're advertising your book, which is held under a publisher's account, right, or a publisher's, uh, um, shall we say, contract, uh, you need a much better A cause, A C O S, than a normal self publisher. Because, and by the way, the A cause, uh, A C O S, which is, oh, good Lord, it's been a while since I broke down that abbreviation. Um, it's, it's ultimately your way of telling how profitable your your ads are. But what it is, is that if you, the target a cause is 70%. If your book is 29 to $2.99 to $9.99. If you can have an a cause of 70% or less, it means you're making more money than you're spending. And that's because you have to remember that Amazon takes a uh, 30% if you're priced within that. So, 100% minus 30% means 70, okay? If you're priced outside of that, Amazon takes 70%, which means your A cause has to be 30% in order for you to make your Amazon ads profitable. But if you have a publisher, you gotta add that one in there too, because remember, every book you sell, that publisher is taking a percentage as well. So keep that in mind, because you may be doing some amazing book ads, However, though, with the publisher getting their cut, you may be actually losing more money than you're actually making money, even though your ads rock. So just a bit of warning on that one, uh, that you have to account for that in order to figure out your positive ROI in your Amazon ads. Thanks, Dave. Have Sorry, if that was way you... too advanced or so. No, 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 no. no. understood, have, thank you. We have people awesome. in all, all different levels, but uh, one of the question I had, Dave, is have you heard anything about why they've shut down Advantage or what's coming from Amazon as to replace or put it back to allow other people to join? So I have some people in Amazon that I have to keep off the record because they kind of help, help me a bit with some things. And my understanding was, was that the Amazon Advantage thing became a train wreck. Uh, that there were too many people or too many uh, things happening in the Amazon Advantage and the ROI for Amazon wasn't good. So they just shut it down. And by the way, one of the sad things about Amazon and books is that the number of people that actually work Kindle Direct Publishing is ridiculously small than the other departments. So sometimes they have a good thing going, but they just don't have the resources to make it even better. And so they'll just quickly shut it down. And uh, the best way to put it is, I think Amazon Advantage was one of those where they just started cutting some of its capability before trying to invest more into it. Okay. Now I have a feeling that at some point they're gonna figure it out 
because they're um, when it comes to Amazon ads, even Jeff Bezos talked about it. And it's funny is Jeff Bezos, one of the richest men in America, uh, running one of the biggest companies in America. He has his little his letter to the investors. And this letter is one page long. And in the last brief to or letter to the investors, he actually spent a long time talking about the importance of Amazon ads to the future of Amazon. A fun fact about Amazon is that Amazon.com is not the number one revenue stream for Amazon. Mm -hmm. The number one revenue for Amazon is their servers. A majority of the world's internet is actually run on Amazon's AWS system. So I bring that up because if the CEO of a company whose minority amount of revenue is centered on the website is talking about the importance of ads, believe me, it's big to them. They're going to figure these things out. And I, I think in the next two, three years, we're going to see a lot of good changes to Amazon ads that are going to make it even better because it's such a huge stream for them. Hmm. Great. Thank you for that insight. Do you have another question for Dave? If there isn't a question and somebody wants to raise their hand, there is one thing I think that's really important uh, for uh, children's authors specifically. And I kind of mentioned this before, but I think it's very important that you remember that your target market is actually the parents. Okay. I know that that sounds obvious, but the fact of the matter is, is that it's depending on your, on your age, I mean, 13 and above, they're usually making buying decisions, but below that your buying decisions are coming from parents. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when you're writing your book descriptions, when you're doing your, your Facebook ads, when you're doing, you know, all of these marketing momentum, you know, aspects, you need to keep in mind that the person who's going to decide whether or not to purchase or not is the parent themselves. So, there are some things that would, you know, when you're writing your book description, think about what it is a parent wants to hear that makes them feel like this is a good book for them to choose for their child, okay, or for them to read for their child. So I just want to bring that up because there are, there are ways, and again, it's like when I go to sit down and write a book description, I actually will write this little blurb to, and I, I have multiple screens because I'm, I'm that kind of person, but I'll put a blurb on my left screen here, and that blurb will be my description of who's going to read my book description. Okay. It's my target market. So in this case, you know, it's, it's a mother of three that, you know, and depend, depending on the demographic that I'm trying to write for, you know, what age group or so I'll try to imagine why did she come to Amazon to purchase? And by the way, I'm sorry, I'm not being sexist, but demographically speaking, it's usually the mom who's, who's buying the book. So I use the word she in this case. Um, and I will, why did she come here? Why is she looking for a book right now? What is it that she wants to accomplish? Why not just go to the library? And believe me, there's enough market sales to believe that parents aren't going to the library. They want something. So I really sit back and I try to imagine that person. And then I like to tackle my book description to be able to truly speak in their terms and you know, convince them that, yes, my four to seven-year-old would love this book. You know, that this is a great learning experience, that this will provide this, this, and this. Um, sometimes, too, like I've seen authors, especially in the children's book area, talk about why they wrote this book. And when you connect in a personal level, you have a much higher chance that that, per, that shopper is going to turn into a buyer. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Dave. Mm -hmm. um, I, I see a, a note from Kelly saying the hard part of that is that the children's book market in the U.S. is largely hardcover. So Seller Central leaves a lot to be desired. And that's why when we lost uh, Advantage, that um, it, it's certainly a big impact on the children's book. Yes. Area. Yeah, hardcovers are, are a big thing. You're right. Um, and I think, you know, uh, interesting enough, this is kind of a good topic is, do you go Amazon or do you go all markets? And I'm really seeing uh, Apple make a lot of great strides in their market. Uh, they're creating, they've got some things on the way to make interactive graphic books. And I say graphic because that works for, for comic books, children's books, uh, textbooks. They're implementing new ways of trying to make it that you can click on things and things will happen. 
um, you're in an anatomy textbook and you can click and it will break, it'll create a bigger picture with animation. You know, it's giving publishers the ability to do a lot more. They are investing a lot of money into it. Uh, last I heard was $50 million being put into this, this project. And that was about six months ago. So one thing I would say to authors is just kind of keep that open mind. And yeah, it's funny coming from the Kindlepreneur that I'm saying, Hey, don't forget about the other markets, but that can be a really good opportunity in the future. And I, I think Amazon will figure it out and do a lot better job with what they're doing. So uh, in time, they'll figure out the, the Amazon advantage and they'll fix that. Okay, Nick, I see your hand. Go ahead. Oh, Got to take yourself off mute, Nick. Let me unmute you. There you go. Go ahead. Kelly has a question. Oh. Can, you, can you ask her? Oh, Kelly. Sorry, I couldn't find the raise hand button, so I was texting Nick. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> um, so my question is, I'm having a hard time um, choosing my title. Mm. Do you have any title advice? Yeah, uh, I take it we're talking children's book, or yes. can you give me a bit about your book? Can you give me that two sentences? Um, oh, okay, let me see. Um, I was working on a blurb before. I should have this ready to go. I clearly don't. Um, okay, well, while you pull that up, here, here's some recommendations on that. If I can't tell what demographic or what genre or what this book is about by either looking at your cover and your title, then it's poorly crafted, okay? If I'm a shopper and I type something into Amazon search, I'm gonna scroll through your covers. I need to know that that cover is what I'm looking for. It's about the right genre, it's about the right subject matter, it's, it's for the right age level, okay? And that is where your title and your book cover really need to be in sync. If you confuse, you lose. And that is a huge thing in marketing, uh, not just books, but any product you ever make. If you confuse the, the customer, they'll just click back or they'll click on some other product. So, yes, it's great to be cutesy. I think it's very awesome to be creative. But if you're too creative and your, your cover isn't direct enough, then you may just make it where nobody knows what it is. I have um, consulted a couple of authors where, in one case, I thought their book cover was a YA, a young adult book. And it turns out it was like a five to seven. Hmm. And I'm like, why would you think that a mother of a five to seven year old would want that as a book for their children? And they said, well, you know, I, I figured that, you know, like it looked great. It looked like these. And I'm like, you have to remember that I'm the mother of a five to seven year old. What is, what is going to catch my eye? What is going to tell me this book is for my five to seven year old. And another time the imagery was very cutesy and the title was very cutesy, but I could never even tell what the book was. So if you, we were talking about having strangers or, you know, having people that are not friends and family and not other authors and just present the, the cover and the title and ask them, you know, Hey, what do you think this book is about and who is it for? And if they can't answer those two questions with some type of, you know, of certainty, then you got to go back to the drawing board. Okay, so more specific. I had kid only, beta readers. Only if your cover isn't specific. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Don't make them both cutesy. Okay. One can be cutesy or creative or neat, but the cover's got to nail it if, if, if the title is cutesy. You see what I'm saying? Yes. If your book is for five to seven-year-olds, it's got to be evident in either your title or your book cover. Okay. And same thing with what it's about and what I'm going to get out of it. Okay. Otherwise, I would say the only way that you can get away with both being cutesy and artsy and, and not direct about what it is, is if you're famous. That's like the trump card. You know, if you're a famous author, you've got a huge following or whatever, your people already know who your genre is. They already know who you write for. So you can just be as cutesy as you want. And I bring that up because a lot of times when, when marketing, people have this really vague cover and they'll have this really artistic, creative title, and I can't tell what it is, but they'll say, oh, well, so-and-so, Brad Thor did that. I'm like, yeah, but I know who Brad Thor is, and Brad Thor 
you know, I can tell you exactly what he does, not by his cover or his title. I know what book that is already. So, you know, if you're not, you really have to make sure it's very evident. Same thing with nonfiction. It's huge. If I can't see the cover and see the title and not know what it is you're going to teach me, how I benefit from your book and who this is for, then it will fail. No matter how great your ads are, how amazing your marketing tactic is, how great your writing is, it will fail. Okay. Cause I think I can write a pretty specific blurb, but the picture is probably vague. So that means I probably need a more specific title to make it for first glance. Uh, like, yeah. And what it is. you know, like, it's funny is, is that we can look at titles and sometimes you can create a great kid's title and then let's face it, we don't need a cover to know exactly what that's about and still enjoy it. Like, you know, uh, I'm just thinking of all these funny ones that pop in the head, uh, like, um, why mommy drinks, um, <laughs> go the F to sleep. Uh, it's, boy, there've been some authors that have had some fun with that one. But, um, but I mean like, you know, uh, dragons love tacos, right? That's, that's a great one. I, or what is it? Why dragons like tacos? Either way, dragons and tacos. It's, I already, I see the picture of the dragon. They love tacos. My kids love that book. My wife hates that book, by the way. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, oh, do you hate it too, fairy book lady? No, but what oh. do you think of the title of my fourth book? It's The Fart Fairy. I I got what that's about. Let me tell you, I, I know that that's <laughs> not one to three. You know, that's probably... Yeah. And by the way, the, how well the fart fairy uh, book cover is designed will let me know the age, you know, you right. use like simple, simple, you know, what is it? Um, Peppa the pig level yeah. drawings. And I'm going to think, all right, this is three, four years old. You start using like a well-designed fart fairy or something like that. And I, again, the, the level of the illustrator and how they draw it can do the demographics. But yeah. I know exactly what that title is about. I know what that book's going to be. And I know it's going to be a, a, a very gaseous and funny. It's my bestseller. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not going to lie. Um, I think there's a, one of the longest bestselling in children's book, especially I think in the older age kids, was uh, Ninja Farts, Silent But Deadly. <laughs> <laughs> what a great title and subtitle. Right. But we get it though, right? We, we, we chuckle. And you can see from the drawing of that cover that this is seven, eight, nine years old. And we know it's going to be humorous. So again, right. just make sure that your cover and title, let us know what genre it is, what demographic it's for, you know, and what to expect. Dave, I want to be fair with you for a time check. I'm glad to continue moving on, but we are at the top of the hour. So do you have time to stay with us? Do you need to drop? Uh, I'll completely leave that up to you. We're going to continue on for our, our remaining work group time through 10, but we're glad to extend for you if, um, if you're willing. Yes, I actually have a meeting right now, but I don't see that person on yet. Let me just hold them off for a bit. And um, if does anybody have any questions? Because I really don't want to like drop without you guys. All right, Nick, jump right into it. Thank you so much, Dave. Uh, kind of a segue from uh, what um, Bobby said about the fart. I, for almost 10 years, I've had a book idea, but it was about poop. And whenever I bring it up to moms, they're like, oh, I would never buy that book. So I'm always struggling. It's an internal struggle with, with, you know, these are stories that I told my niece and nephew when they were five and seven. I mean, and they, the kids just love them. And, I, and, I, and it's a constant struggle within myself, whether I should pursue it or not. Yeah, that's, that's an interesting aspect. I, I think one of the things is, is study the, the successful fart books. Let's face it. Like, don't recreate the wheel here. Like, why is it that, that um, what is it, Ninja, Ninja Farts is, is successful? Well, first off, it is in that range of kids that can make purchasing decisions, right? Right. Um, the other thing, too, is, is that I think there's an element to that book that's about a brother and sister and dealing with being a kid entering into school, a new school. Um, so there is some heartwarming tendencies. And no, actually, I haven't read it. I just kept coming across it in the search results and actually kept, and the guy has made so much money from it. It's like not even funny. So I study it. Right. But ask yourself why. Um, and another thing to keep in mind too, is, is that we, we just heard from fairy book lady. I'm sorry. I can't remember her name. I just see the, the Bobby. name. Yeah. Bobby. Bobby. Yes. 
you said it yourself. It was successful. So, you know, now let's not go study Bobby's like Bobby's rocked on and we're not. See, I love it. I, I can exactly tell what age level that is. That's a good one. But look at why the other farts are working. I can't believe I just said that. Wow. Yeah. Well, oh, why are those fart books working? Can I quote like, you on that for my blog post? <laughs> yeah, sure. So there he was having bourbon when all of a sudden he said, why are the farts working? Um, anyways, I'm sorry. My, my point though is, is that ask yourself why. Those are proof that proof in the pudding. Um, honestly, and just because it's about farts does not mean that's going to be successful, but because it's positioned in a certain way, because the art shows a certain type. That's why the fart books are working. The kids love reading books about farts. Let's face it. They love reading books about dinosaurs. They love reading about books about riding dinosaurs or being a ninja or, or what have you. They love that. Parents want their kids to want to read books. Parents are not going to choose to read a book on farts, but if their kid is reading books on farts, he's reading, he's reading and they're happy. So I would almost say that farts almost exclude a certain age demographic and bring you into another one. And if you do enough research, you'll start to see that. And I have to say at, at most of the events that I do where I do in-person sales, uh, book fairs and holiday markets, there are, there's a very, very small percentage of adults who walk by and say, oh, that's disgusting. I would never buy that. But that's a very, very small percentage. Yeah. So, um, I, you know, the sell. Lie, right? what'd you say? I said they're there, but the numbers don't lie. That's right. That's right. It's not for everyone. Nothing's for everyone. But the majority of the people have a sense of humor. Well, and I think what I love most about that is, is that you probably enjoyed making that book. A lot of laughs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I'll bet it's even better when you're, when your children's children's children or, or little kids read your book and laugh. It's probably like the greatest feeling, right? It is. Especially, especially it is. when you give a whoopee cushion along with yes, the book. Yes, I give a whoopee cushion. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> and then to see it succeed. I mean, that, that's really what we do here. Yeah. Um, you know, there's nothing more beautiful than, oop, hold on, my person is here. Sorry, I'm just going to ask for five more minutes. All yeah. Right. So what I'll ask for the, the last five minutes, I know that many of us, and I've talked to many of the authors that are on here today, and I've faced a lot of frustration myself with just selling my first book where you look at it and you go okay it's a great it's a great title the book is great it's a fantastic illustrations but and i've tried everything and it's just not selling like what do you you know what encouragement can you provide or advice can you provide for authors who are just ready to just hang it up with amazon well I mean, you said it, right? If you know that the cover, and I mean, we're not talking friends and family here, but you know that the cover's right, that it's a great story, that you've done a great job with it, and uh, you have a book description that, I mean, really does sound interesting. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Sounds mm -hmm. interesting, okay? Uh, use that elevator pitch thing. If you see their eyes glaze over, you know it's not. Um, and improve it as you go. But when you have those things, at that point, it's about just getting it in front of the market. Uh, I'm a, I love Amazon ads because at that point I'm advertising my book, not to just regular Joe Schmoes. I'm advertising my, my book to people who've decided they want to buy a book. They're just trying to figure out which book to me, that's way better than trying to advertise on Facebook where you're trying to convince somebody to leave their cat videos, you know, or to see what their friend ate at lunch to then go over to another platform called Amazon and to then make a decision to buy a book and then make a decision to buy your book. Mm -hmm. So I, I love Amazon ads because we can finally take away that, shall we say, um, uncertainty. Mm -hmm. We can now see that Amazon just showed our book to 80,000 people. And out of those 80,000 people, only this percentage chose to click on our book. And then out of that number, only a percentage chose to buy our book and it finally takes the guesswork away but when you have it honed down and you start to really work that you will start to see scaling you will start to see 
relevancy and continued sales. And, you know, we, we don't, we no longer have that book where we do a great job. We create this great book. We do a bit of book marketing and all of a sudden we see some sales come in and then a couple of weeks later or a month later, the sales drop. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'll leave it to you. I know you have a very short time left. Do you have any closing um, advice or anything that you want to close out your part with? Well, uh, first off, I just want to say everything you guys are doing is amazing. I love the fact that you guys are creating children's book as a dad myself. Um, you know, I, I think it's just a beautiful thing to be able to have that outlet for your writing and to increase the joy of children out there. I think that's just absolutely amazing. Um, I love that you guys are here too, uh, trying to learn. I know it feels like the Amazon world is, is crowded. Um, or that there are a lot of books out there. But I will tell you that a mass majority of authors are not sitting here learning. A majority of those competitors are just writing a book and putting it on to Amazon and hoping it, it works. Mm -hmm. They're not sitting here taking notes and listening. They're not reading. They're not studying. You guys are doing something that a mass majority of your competitors are not doing. And taking it seriously and learning is very important. And I want to add one more thing to that too. Failure is okay. We all fail. We always have. But the most important part is that you learn from it. Okay. That you grow. The first book that I ever produced sucked. It didn't make any money. It didn't get read. It just happens. That's when I was like, why? I wanted to learn. I didn't quit. I didn't run away. Uh, the first time I did an Amazon ad sucked. It did not do well. I spent a lot of money, but I didn't pivot away. I didn't just say, okay, well, that didn't work for me magically the first time. I'll try this other thing over here. Instead, I dug down. I said, if I know that my market's on Amazon, or I know that there are kids out there that can benefit from my book, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to figure this out. And I'm going to take every failure as a learning experience. And the next time I do it, I'm going to do it better. And I'm going to do it better. And that's when I started to grow the skill that I have with Amazon ads. That's how I developed the skill on creating better books. That's how I developed the skill of creating better marketing plans. So, so I would 100% recommend to everyone out there, if you truly are creating good books that you know would benefit people out there, it's about developing a skill and getting it in front of them and treat it like that. You can't just learn how to play a ukulele by picking it up and strumming a couple of chords and realizing that didn't sound awesome. You got to keep at it until you finally start sounding amazing. Uh, personally, my, my next instrument is going to be uh, bagpipes. It's <laughs> I love bagpipes. But let's face it, my family's going to kill me the first couple of times I pick it up. But I'll keep at it. And one day, they'll think it's cool. Or mm -hmm. at least I keep telling myself that, but whatever. <laughs> so, guys, I would say that if you really are if you're really into this, if you're really ready for this, it's about learning and growing and keeping at it. And do not waste your time pivoting from left to right, trying to find the next new thing. If mm -hmm. Amazon ads is it, then do it. If Facebook ads is it, then do it. If you know any other marketing tactic is the one, you can accomplish it, but just stick with it until you've truly learned it. Mm -hmm. That is great words. Thank you so much for your time. This was fabulous. I really appreciate it. And thank you guys for having me on here. Um, if anything I said it drew a question or you have a question later or so, you can always go to kindlepreneur.com, go to the contact me page and go ahead and write up uh, your question and I will answer it within 24 hours. That's always my goal. I do inbox zero in 24 or so. Yeah, and he actually does answer all of his, his email. I'm always surprised at how quickly I get information back. So, yeah, he's awesome. Yeah, it's, it's sort of like my own personal thing. When I first started, I, I sent out a lot of questions to people, and I, I like rarely got a response. So it's always like my own pain point of like, no. You know, you never know who is there, you know, who is asking that question or where they're going to be. Yeah. So Well, Dave, you never know who you're inspiring, and I feel like, Everybody that's here benefiting from this session and from the replays that we have, it really did start with the inspiration that came from you. So 
you never know what you're inspiring and to just keep helping one another. And that's what really what this group is all about. So thank you for that. Well, thank you. That really means a lot, guys. And uh, thank you guys so much. And you guys have a wonderful rest of your night. Thank you, Dave. Too. Yeah. Thanks, Bye. Dave. Bye, guys. Bye. All right, guys. So I don't have any specific topics to jump into. So I'm wide open if you guys have ideas or you want to share some things that are going on with your books or next steps. What can I do to help you? Oh, I see Misty. Misty, do you want to share a little bit about how your book launch is going so far? I would love to have everybody hear a little bit and be encouraged. Um, yes. Let's see. Let me check. I have three reviews that have come through so far. Good. <laughs> All five stars. Yay. Yeah. Um, and I only know one of them. So that's good. <laughs> um, and I've sold eight. I think as of last time I checked, I sold eight ebooks. So. Um, my paperback went live today, which was an accident. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so they're not linked at the moment, and I'm um, not sure what to do. So. That's just an email that you need to send to them to make sure that they link them. So I'm wondering if we are going to do, if I should go through the hassle or if we should unpublish and then just republish by typing in everything. Yeah. Um, I don't know if anyone else has, you know, has some advice there. So the issue is that when you're first newly published, you get kind of that best new release kind of, and that's what Misty has right now. You didn't even say that you got your best new release in a number of categories for the Kindle and four, four categories. Um, so what is that from? Keyword analysis, category analysis, right? We used Dave's category analysis and we found some great categories. Misty has been a fantastic student and she's learning to do some of this herself. And then we get together and we look at it and we keep adjusting things. So we knew when we went into this because of Dave's tool, we knew how many books she had to sell in certain categories in order to be number one. So that is going to be fantastic because you're going to go from so the thing the the change there misty is if you're brand new and you're just publishing it'll show it'll say best new release if you have if you unpublish it make a change and then republish and, it, and they don't identify it as a new release and they won't change it for you then what you'll end up with is bestseller in that category Right. So right now I'm number one in one category, not new release, but as selling. Mm -hmm. So I, that is, and I'm number two in two other categories. So, right. And so, and as you, you have not yet sent out your email to your 50 um, people that have joined your advanced reader list, right? Um, I did uh, put it on Facebook on, a, on my advanced reader group. Okay. But you're going to, you're going to do now the best response you're going to get. And that's why everybody keeps saying emails, 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 make sure you get emails because that that's, what's going to, people are going to respond to the way that Facebook has changed groups so that not all of your, of your uh, posts are really seen in Facebook feeds. So it's only shown to a very small percentage of people that are part of your group or that are following your group. So I would expect to see a spike in additional sales when you send out your email to that 50. Mm -hmm. And then what we also have planned with, um, with this, as far as a promotional perspective, we signed up for the free book promotion from, uh, you, in KDP Select. And so that is going to be, I think, Tuesday and Wednesday, right? Yep. Has BookBub gotten back to you, Misty, about the promotion there? No. Not yet. It usually takes them like a couple days, two, three days. So we did request BookBub to give, uh, to, to get a special deal that said to, to uh, announce the free book and give it away. And BookBub is hands down the best promotion um, site out there. They don't accept everybody's book though. And it is more costly. Do you remember, Misty, how much we're going to pay for, you were going to pay for it? I think it was 130 for the two days. Right, 130 for a couple of days, but it's gonna go to 
hundreds of thousands of people and there's going to be a ton of downloads. So what happens and why that's really important is all of a sudden, Amazon's going to see all this traffic coming in. They're going to see interest from all over the world in your book. You're also going to have a bunch of people downloading it and reading it. So you're going to have your Kindle reads, your K-O-L-L, Kindle pages read, is going to spike. And for that month, you, you could very well end up with a bonus for that month. I think the month that I did my book bub promotion for my puppy pickup day book. I think I got a $700 bonus for that month with really? Kindle. Yes. Wow. So it's well worth it. And then um, the other part of it is usually about 2% of the people that download your book or they get it for free will go in and review it. So you're going to start collecting reviews. Your print book is right now not showing as connected to the ebook. But as soon as it is connected, everything, all the reviews from the ebook will also cross over into any print books that you have as well. So you will have all of that coming together for you. And all of the, so the more people open it up and see, oh, she's got, you know, 35 reviews. Now all of a sudden you're not a onesie, twosie, three or four review kind of a, a book. You, you are proven and it's not just, hey, she's had family and friends go in and buy it and, and, and give her some reviews. It, it's got some street cred. So that's part of what this is all about. The other thing we did is we went into um, Fussy Librarian and scheduled. Did they get back to you with accepting your, your schedule for Tuesday and Wednesday? Um, and, and this is based on my own experiences. Uh, you guys can test and, and try some different days if you'd like. I've probably done maybe a dozen or two dozen promotions on the books that I've been, that I have. And um, Tuesdays and Wednesdays are like the best days for as far as volume for free books uh, from my experience. So, so that site I think it was $15, if I remember correctly, or $13 to do the, um, the promotion with them. And they have lots of uh, children's book. People are signing up for free children's books and, and deals on children's books. So that site will also be working on promotion. So you've got momentum of Amazon saying, oh, this is a new release. I'm going to give it some special attention because it just got released plus BookBub, plus the, um, the, uh, the Fussy Librarian. And then the other thing that I did is I took a, there was a tool out there that I heard about from Dave's website, and I went in and it allowed me to submit Misty's book to 30 different sites just like Fussy Librarian in a matter of about five seconds. It went whoop, out. So now there are people out there getting emails uh, or seeing um, emails for, for Misty that are for her book. So she, she's able to start, again, just getting it in eyes uh, on her book. And the good thing about Misty's book is it is, it is a, um, it's a gift book. So people are going to look at the ebook, and that's wonderful. They'll get to see all of the pages and how beautifully illustrated it is. It's all watercolor, hand drawn. Um, but if they want to buy this gift book as a get well book for a friend or a relative, um, they're going to have to go buy the physical book. So this is really just advertisement for you, Misty. And I, th that's what excites me is that it really, you're, you're not hurting yourself by giving away this ebook. Yeah, I agree. So anybody have any questions or comments for Misty? I do. Go ahead. Um, Misty, I mentioned to April that um, your book would be wonderful in hospital gift shops. And I don't know if you've thought about that, but I think it would be a great seller for those places. I have thought about that. And also Michelle, who is talking? I'm sorry. It's Pat Wallace. Oh, hi Pat. Um, I thought about that and Michelle also, um, she's, she comes to these meetings sometimes. I don't see her today, but 
she is a quilter and she offered to price making a couple quilts that match the quilts the quilt of the koala in my book so that's I that great was kind of fun for a giveaway or something special or even to donate she suggested donating it to the ronald mcdonald house because she has herself spent two weeks there so that was oh, a good that idea. would be great the other thing is uh and i've heard this from other authors um they put them as samples in doctor's offices. Ooh, that's a good idea, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, because yeah, I read to my kids all the time in doctor's offices when they have those books right there. Yep, yep. And, and, and many of them are sick. Otherwise, they wouldn't be there to begin with, right? That's right. Funny. Like, why didn't I think of that? It's so funny when you put the power of, you know, different brains together, what we can come up with as a group to really help each other. And sometimes it could be a door opened, you know, somebody that you know, you can connect an author with, or, you know, just has a complimentary business for collaboration, or, you know, owns a gift shop that is in a hospital these are the kinds of things that this group i think will will really be able to benefit from is the the power and wisdom of the group and helping one another through it is nick still here nick um i just was reading he wrote i'm so inspired with capital capital letters i'm so inspired dave was really inspiring i i love i'm so grateful that we had him today and I'm crossing my fingers. There's no issue with the recording because that was amazing. <laughs> Anybody else have any comments? Hi, Patty. Go ahead. Oh, hold on. I can un I can unmute you. Go ahead. I got you. I was I was shooing a fly. I don't have a question. Oh, okay. Oh, you were shooing a fly. <laughs> Well, Patty, you are next, you know, yours is going to be the next launch that we're all going to get ready for. So um, we'll see, you know, if anybody has anything that they want to share or have questions about. I'm looking at the time and I would love to, um, if, if there's not a lot of questions, we have like half an hour left. I would love to be able to share some examples of what's coming together for your book. If you, if you are okay with that, Patty. Yeah. Okay. But before we do that, um, does anybody else have questions or want to share a little bit about their book or challenges that are you're facing? No. I think we lost quite a few people too, but since we are recording, I want to um, take some time to just show some of the stuff that's going on. I'm excited. Um, at first, when I put this work group together, I thought, you know, I didn't know how long should this group be. You know, I didn't want it to be like a, a perpetual um, everybody just come together once a week forever to, to produce your book. I felt like we needed to do a time phased um, and then restart it if we need to. And some people um, like Misty started in one group and then decided to come back for the next one. And so don't feel bad if you're at a point where you're not progressing as quickly as you would like. Or I think we had somebody say they um, haven't even like finalize their manuscript yet, but they're here learning a whole bunch. Um, it is going to be wonderful for you to get this knowledge, use this knowledge, and then come back again, or just do the on demand, you know, go through the videos one by one and just, you know, follow the assignments and do the things that you need to do. But you don't, one person doesn't have to follow the same path as another. But I thought 12 weeks was just not enough time, having seen how the first group went. Uh, then we got to the second group, and we learned so much in the first group. I was amazed at how people were actually able to start moving forward so quickly. So um, I am going to give some accolades to um, Patty for the work that she's doing. And there are others as well we're quite far along with. 
um, but I don't have anybody on the line that I have permission to show things. So let me just at least pull up Patty's. Let's see, info. I have a love-hate relationship going on with Dropbox right now because I feel like I'm losing so much of my, um, let's see. I just feel like I, I, I've got three different email addresses and Dropbox is tied to all different email addresses. Okay, here we go, final last update. I am going to open up the book layout. So we have, Patty started with, on week one, with a story that wasn't yet ready to be edited. She has worked with Bobby. Bobby edited her story. It is amazing. And we have worked. Oh, I love it. I love it. It is such an amazing story. You're going to love it. Um, then we went to selecting an illustrator. She used the template contract that I have. I also have some relationships with a few illustrators. Actually, I have access to like 20 different illustrators if you count the fact that Pencil Master has 17 illustrators, right? So if, if you can't find an illustrator between 20 that, you, that will do a good job, it's going to, you know, I, I'd be hard pressed to think that you'll be able to find them anywhere else. But um, because we had prearranged the um, contract and the agreement, I, and I had these illustrators that were able to meet meet with um, authors, provide some samples at low cost. We were able to select and then start moving forward with the story. So let's see what we have here. Um, and I will, uh, you know what I should do? I should start with the cover because this is not the cover. Um, let's see. Book layout. There's a different one that says cover. Forgive me. Oh, here it is. My lost my shoe cover. Uh, yes, add it to my Dropbox. Lost my shoe cover. Eleven thirty-seven today. Cover fix. Where is praises covers? Okay, sorry guys. Give me a minute. I'm just gonna look. I've got. I'm gonna just go to pra where Praise uh, sent me some information. So Praise Sappler, um, you guys have all met Nicole Lavoy, who is uh, a, a great graphic designer, a, a personal friend as well. Um, but I also, because uh, Nicole has been really tied up with um, work. And um, due to some, some other things that I had going on at the same time that she was doing something different, I ended up going to um, Praise, who I, I was referred by another person. And Praise Saffler is really um, just phenomenal when it comes to laying out. And you'll see here, she took what, what uh, the cover design that was made by um, Harry Avera. This is Harry Avera's work. And the name of the book is Have You Seen My Lost Shoe? A Fun Zoo Adventure. So I think if we're th looking at Dave's, Dave Chesson uh, and thinking about what Dave said, a really engaging, you know, easy to understand what you're going to get in the book and about what age range, I think this ticks all those boxes. Uh, what we are trying to also do with this is um, just experiment with different colors of the text and different layout of the text. So let me just, let's see. So that's one. We also have the yellow. She did a yellow version, My Lost Shoe. Um, and this is like an orangish. I think I like this the best, but I know, Pat, you're not too fond of orange, right? And I think there's still a little bit of tweaking, but what do you guys think of the cover? Any feedback for, um, for Patty? I have some feedback. Okay. Um, the, when I, the first time I looked at it, I saw last, not lost. Okay, so the, the font there is a I little think, tricky. Yeah, I think we need a better O. Okay. 
Yeah, and it's it's uh, the lost is in cursive, but the rest are is not. So, yeah, we'll we'll have her take a look at that. Yeah, um, I also felt like the have you seen kind of gets lost. Like if if it's shrunk up as a as a thumbnail. It kind of disappears, and I, I think I'd like to have something a little bit different there. Patty, how do you feel about the cover? Any Anything that you're working on with this? I'm going to unmute you, Patty. Okay. Patty, anything more that you want um, to say about the cover? No. I think Bobby's right about the O, and I think you're right about the have you seen getting lost in the trees. Yeah. I think other than that, I, I would make it all in one color, the have you seen, the same color as the my lost shoe. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll, pass yeah. Along, we'll pass along that feedback to praise. So the graphic designer took what Harry did, added the words to it. As you'll see, I'll go into that folder. Oh, I hope I didn't just click out of it. Um, I'll go back into that folder and whoopsie. There we go. All right. So I'll go back here now to the just kind of browse through the storybook. Um, do you want to share, um, Patty, what was your experience working with the illustrator and through the illustration process? How did, I mean, I know that there's always going to be stress involved, but do you have any experience or advice to share with the rest of us that are coming after you? Yes. Be very specific in what you want, unless you're going to turn them loose to do what they want. Um, I sent some pictures that I, looking back on them, what was I thinking? You know, how would he get to where that picture that I sent him to what was in my mind, it would have been impossible. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just an impossible task. Um, so the more specific and the more information, the better. Um, you look, I, I, I want to go to book layout because I want to actually show the, the text on the page as well. And uh, don't be alarmed, Pat. If Patty, if you see that um, there's not, you know, like some of the changes that we've we've requested and are not, might not be in here, she might be working offline on some of this stuff. So um, don't worry about it. As we go through, she's making changes, and we'll update it um, on the the folder shortly. So any feedback on on the text, um, as far as you know, the style of text, the ability to read it. I think the readability is fine. I always like larger text because my eyes are old, but my, my granddaughter tells me that all the time. Nana, you have old eyes. They can't see good. <laughs> I don't. I always, like, I, I have trouble if the, if the words are too small, but I don't think that this is too small. I would like to have it bigger, but I know in the rest of the book, it's not easy to grow it because there's there's some pages that where there's just not a lot of room. Do you know what size font that is? I don't. I would have to ask Praise. I'm going to assume it's a 12, but um, a 12 or a 14, but I'll have to ask her. Okay. 14 is, is a good size for young kids. Okay. Better I'll, than 12. I'll make sure. So this is a zoo adventure. Do you want to kind of give a little bit of um, – of background about your book, Patty, and then we'll just kind of uh, scroll through some of the pages. Um, I'm not sure what you want here. It, it came from a poem that I wrote in the fourth grade, so I've been thinking about it for, uh, what, 50, 55 years? And about 10 years ago, I decided I'd put it on my desktop and start working on it and just picked away at it once in a while and, and then uh, decided to get serious about it about a year ago. Amazing. It's a darling book. I mean, just from what I'm reading and your pictures, it is very cute. This face, Thank you. This face we've, we've asked to be changed because he's supposed to be talking to the the snakes so that face will go away but if you look what I really love about these illustrations is the beautiful bright colors um, the expressions I think that Harry Avera 
is amazing when it comes to working with expressions in characters. And I just love his style. If you like what you see, this is pretty much Harry's style. Uh, he's not somebody that has like five or six styles to choose from. He's, you know, it's a pretty much a specific style. He can draw lots of different types of characters, but this is the style that, that he does. You'll see a very, like, you'll see lots of detail. Look at the detail in the trees. I really love that. Um, and just going back for those of you that have a really low budget, um, this is $35 a page with Harry. So, uh, and double page spreads, I think we're 60. So you can get this level of detail in a person who's got, you know, who's um, graduated from art school with honors and has like 20 years experience for that price. It's not common, but we found him and we love him. And boy, can he crank this stuff out quickly. So he's, it's April. It's, yes. There are things in these pictures that we have been changed. Yeah, I mentioned that to you already. Are these supposed to be current? This this one here is not oh, current. Okay. She's currently working on all of the changes, incorporating everything. So she's got all the final stuff from Harry. So if you see a little a little tweak here and there that they were supposed to be changed, this is not her final version. She said she'd have it to me uh, by tomorrow. The updates. Okay. So, okay. Love, 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 love the camels. And actually he changed it so that the camels are looking down with a really surprised look as the shoe goes running by them. So it's really kind of cute. I don't think we're on the same page as you. Now we're on the camels. Oh, you know what? Your, your computer is so slow, but you are sharing my desktop, right? You see my desktop? Uh, you're always behind. Yeah, you're always behind. I am. And it's, okay. it has to do with your computer. So I'll try to go a little more slowly, Pat, so that I don't lose you. No, that's okay. That's okay. I love that's the okay. sloth. I think he's just adorable. Um, so again, you know, this is about this little boy that loses his shoe and they're looking all over for it. And we get to see the lions, the sloth this shoe running by in a number of different pages um, as they search high and low to try to find it, which is really cool. And look at the details. Like we've got this really surprised little boy. Look at the wheelchair and the details of this one character here. Look at all the characters that are in this. Can you imagine that this page was $60 for all of what he did here? I just think it's, um, just amazing when I look at the prices of other illustrators and you know uh, when I did my puppy pickup day I paid two hundred and fifty dollars a single page and I paid four hundred or I think four hundred so this a big difference and yet the colors are beautiful and bright um, he still takes attention to detail which I love with you know the, the the birds the animals everything that he's doing here is um really there's a lot of attention to detail and that's the sign of a really good illustrator but i'll go one step farther a sign of an amazing illustrator is when you schedule time on his calendar and he shows up and you talk and you say hey can you change that and he says wait a minute opens it up and changes it right there. Oh, no, no, move it a little bit to the left. Yep, now a little bit more, to, a little up. Okay, that's good. Now can you add snorkels or can you add this or that? And he's doing it on the fly. Like how many illustrators out there would be so comfortable and so able to just turn that stuff around with you on the line with them so that by the end of your feedback session, he's not going off and doing things. It's, it's done, it, you're done. So it's, it's pretty, and he'll tell us sometimes that um, that's something that's going to take a little longer. So we'll, I'll go do that and send it back to you. Um, but that's not something that I see very often. So I'm a real big fan of Harry to the point of I actually have him doing my next book as well. So my um, Join the Club, No Bullying, no Bullying Allowed is a bullying book that, that he has done all of my drawings. And now he's going to be going through and doing the coloring for my book as well. And look at the, this is just adorable. 
Let me know if you have questions as we're going through. Um, I love this, this little boy dreaming and the look on his face and he's dreaming about the day that he had all these little, little mice that, so the little daddy mouse stole the shoe and now they're, they're all cuddled in and they made a little nest for themselves. And then, and then the same thing starts at the end where he loses his other shoe. And you see at the end, now we've got somebody else who's kidnapped this shoe and now made a nice nest for, for the birdies here. So it's kind of cute. I can't wait to, um, to see this. And I, I think, um, Patty, we're, we're going to have praise finishing things up this week. And so by next week, we should be ready to launch. That means where we already started setting up KDP. We started with, um, I'm trying to think of the other, the other aspects. We, we um, need to finalize some keywords, which I've already started with analyzing keywords and categories for you. So we're going to start plugging all that in over the next week or so. April. I'm not sure, and I don't even know if I should worry about it at this point, but I think there's a page missing. Probably. Um, I, I, I think, I know that this is not the exact file that, that is the end file that Praise is working on. She also asked if you could provide her with the copyright page and the title page and dedications so that she can take that text and put it in as well. I don't think it was in the initial... The initial document we sent over to Praise didn't have that. Um, and if you have, I think you already did the back, did. the back blurb though, right? You've got that. So. No, I, that's one of the things I want to talk to you about. Okay. Okay. So how are we doing here with timing? 9:46. So we've got another 15 minutes if anybody wants to jump in or, or move on to something else. Can we go back to the first place that we see the shoe running by itself? Sure. Running with the mouse. Uh, can I? I think it's page four. Page three. Okay, yeah, it's page four. So here. And in the in the one that we um, updated, it's got like a little blur behind it and this and this bush is pushed over a little bit more so that it blocks the vision of the boy. So he can't see, we can he can't see the shoe, but the shoe is in motion running with the little with this little um little guy here. Let me just zoom in. And come up. So you can see like the little feet, the little hands and the tail. And he, we actually had him extend the tail and make this a little bit um, more defined, the, the, the mouse a little more defined. So we see feet. We don't exactly know what it is, but something's running away with the shoe. Okay. I, I'm having trouble seeing feet. I, I'm, I'm finding it a, a little bit small. Yeah. Um, I think in the update um, that we did, we did make uh, a point of. I would refining, make that. Yeah, I think we refined that a little bit because I told him that the color, the color of the mouse was so close to the color of the shoe, it was hard to see. Uh -huh. And I think he did, he did change the the color slightly or the shadowing on the shoe so that it did stand out more. And we added a nice long, a longer tail and uh, the feet are more defined as well. Okay. Can it, can it be bigger than that? We could. Um, I think we just want to make sure that, cause this is the boy's shoe. So it's not, you know, we, we, we don't want it to be so big that it, it looks off. Um, but the mouse might be bigger. That's what I mean, not the shoe. The shoe yeah, yeah. is fine, but I'm, I'm having trouble seeing the mouse. I would, I would enlarge the mouse yep. so you can really see little feet taking the show away. Yep. It's very cute. I love this story. I think it's going to be um, the next bestseller of the group. 
Misty, Misty. All these bestsellers, can we? Huh? Can we handle all these bestsellers? Yep, we can. <laughs> we, we as a group can help, help push these things. But when you've got beautiful books like this, it makes such a difference. Yeah. And it was a lot of work and a lot of back and forth, but uh, we're really close on this one. It's very cute. Very, very cute. So does anybody on the line, um, Pat, do you want to walk through anything? Pat Wallace, is there anything that you need to walk through or any questions you have? I was trying to think about what I'm doing and I love, I want to say I love this. It, it's a beautiful little book and a sweet story. I, I think it's going to do really well. Um, I'm you. just... I'm going kind of round and round. I think I really need to have a session with you doing keywords and title ideas because my Dragon's ABC book is, it's all funny stuff. It's not serious or anything. So mm -hmm. I, I don't know if it should be like funny dragons, dragon ABCs or I don't know. <laughs> No. The, person, the person the person I always lean on for things like that when I'm thinking about, you know, trying to visualize, I'm not a very good visual person, but the person I lean on a lot is Bobby. Um, so if you have a story that Bobby hasn't been, hasn't edited or hasn't critiqued, she is an awesome resource for this group. Yeah, well, I'll be getting my money, but not this coming week but the following week. So then I can start thinking about the things that cost. <laughs> Always happy to help. Always happy to help. <laughs> yeah. So we'll, and we'll get you there. It, it's okay if it takes a little longer. You're dealing with a, a lower budget and, you know, time that it takes to get through this stuff. You're also juggling an awful lot right now on your plate. So it doesn't have to be at the same speed as everyone else. It, your speed is the right speed. So don't, don't pressure yourself or feel bad because others are, are ahead of you. Just help and celebrate there, you know, and share and help us make some awesome bestsellers. And when it's your turn, we're all going to be there for you too. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Excellent advice. Don't just take your time mm -hmm. and, and we'll help you get there. It's not a race. No. Nope. And I did today finally figure out uh, what to do on the illustrations with the uh, cat, cat book. Um, I now know what I needed to fill in there. So I've, I'll have that book all finished illustrating by tomorrow. So that one will be on its way to done. Just it'll be a matter of getting the word placement done. Okay. Go on from there. Um, I have to jump. Um, I just got a message from Melanie um, and she and Pradeep are waiting for me in another meeting um, to walk through her book. So um, if, if it's okay with you guys, I'm going to cut this a little short, hop on with her on my, and I was sitting here thinking, okay, I'll just wait until Pradeep pops on and Melanie, but I'm on a different Zoom ID. So <laughs> here I was thinking, oh, well, they'll get here and then I'll, I'll you know, move to the next meeting. But um, so I need to actually shut down this one, let, let the recording go and I'll jump on, on to that other meeting now. Okay. Wonderful. Bye, Bye everybody. Okay. Bye. Bye, everyone. April? Yes. We have an appointment tonight in just a few minutes. Do you want to put it off until later? Yeah, I think if you're a little flexible, I'll, I'll ping Harry as well. But give me a uh, minute. But, I mean, I don't know if Melanie is, if Pradeep is even on there with Melanie. So let me assess the situation and I'll send you a, a quick email. I'll be here all evening. Okay, thank you.